Steve and me again back with another Bullseye Guy podcast coming up. Uh, a new year is fast approaching, so we are excited for 2021. And what invariably you learn people do is they learn about goal setting, right? Like what are your New Year's resolutions? How do we set goals? And, and those of you that know me, I've read hundreds of books. I don't believe people know how to set goals and be specific. But even if they do, the mental aspect of belief, I don't think people really know how the mind works to be successful for all of these wish lists of things they want. And, and, and with that, I'm super excited. We've got Brent Webb here. Brent's got a book out, Mind Power. He's got some exciting stuff. Former mentalist, which I, I learned. Uh, so super excited. Brent, thanks for taking the time. Give us a, a quick introduction on yourself. Hey, Stephen, great to see you finally, and thanks for having me on. Um, so I have been doing this for 26 years, and just like you, it's the only job uh, I've ever had, nothing else. I really don't have any other, I don't even know what I'm qualified to do. I would literally be one of those guys that are giving you the card at Walmart. I don't know what I, I would do otherwise. But I started out as a magician, uh, super lucky, met Don Rickles when I was 18, uh, spent a decade of, as an opening act. Um, you know, I've worked all over the world, the White House three times, just been super lucky. But along the way, I started moving into, you know, mind power and, and learning. I, I took the chance of I'm going around the world anyway, and I'm being paid to perform everywhere. So why don't I learn from some of these people? You know, I'm, I'm sitting with Joan Rivers, you know, I, I need to be learning from these successful people. So yeah. it's what really got me away from being a magician into a mentalist. And then now, you know, into more of a mind power expert. So that's, you know, that's my story. And so with the magician side, what, what brought you into that is, were you interested as a kid? Did you learn you had a skill set? If we call mentalists a skill set or a gift, I, I'll let you pick that one. But what, what sort of got you into this? It's a curse. It's not a gift. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Depends on which side you're on for the, if you're on the other side of the mentalist, it could be as well. Yeah. I mean, I started out as a little kid, little chubby kid, like all little magicians usually. It's a little, you know, kid who's awkward for some reason. Yeah. I got a magic set. And it gives you, you know, when you're five, six, seven years old, it gives you a skill that other people don't have. So, you know, it puts you in a different, a different plane. And I just love that from the beginning. But my dad used to do this thing where he would, you know, hide a coin in his hand. And I would always, I was very intuitive from a young age. And I would know where the coin was. So I started moving into, into mind reading and, you know, mentalism in my teens but I didn't really become a mentalist until I was working in Vegas one time with uh, Gladys Knight. And there, there was a mentalist coming the next week. She had to stay and they asked me if I could stay, but I was doing a magic act. And they said, could you do, you know, mind reading act? And I, of course, for that, you know, for yeah. that money, of course I could. And uh, I had always rehearsed and practiced, but it's one of those things very scary. When you're a mentalist, it's just you and the audience. It's not right. you and a bunch of girls and smoke and fog and, you know, lions, it's you. So that was very scary to get into that. But once I did, I mean, I sold everything immediately. I realized I could make more money, have more fun. And, you know, I could travel easier. I wasn't carrying a semi full of equipment. Yeah. So I, once I made that move, I mean, everything has been, you know, gravy since then until this year, you know, coronavirus. Yeah. Th th this year's not gravy. It's, you know, we, we don't know the word yet, but hopefully we'll get out of it. So I want to talk to you a little bit about transition then, because this is, is interesting as a mentalist, how much of it, again, do you think is, is a gift or intuition? How much of it do you think is a skill that can be learned? Well, as far, if, if you were to take the word mentalist as a stage performer, a lot of people can learn that because you're learning it like a magician. You know, you, somebody's teaching you secrets. Now, if you're, if you're becoming a mentalist with, you know, eyes on um, psychology and you're looking at body language and, you know, other things, then of course you have to have some some intuition to start with, because um, it's much it's much more difficult, you know, going from from zero. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it used to be one of those things where I could meet someone and I would know immediately. First day of school, I would know everybody I was gonna for that year. Who am I gonna be friends with? Who am I not gonna like? Who not to trust? Yeah. The problem is, after a week, I'm just it, it doesn't do me any good. It's once I, I, you know it's it's the reason in Vegas or anywhere I'm performing I don't meet the audience. I never meet the audience before the show because I want to come out cold and I want to work with them. You know, if I start interacting and talking to them and, you know, getting any emotion involved into it, then it's over. You know, right. I lose any edge that I have. So I kind of, you know, keep myself away from that sort of thing. 
it's it's funny because I moved around a lot growing up and I have you know very few friends I've, I've got some but I have one particular one Tom Zinner that I've interviewed and I met Tom in Chicago 20 something years ago when the Bulls championships were going on in the 90s and I met Tom and John Kelly and they're both you know they've gone on done great things and I to your point Brent when I met Tom I'm like you and I'll be lifelong friends John probably not and it's <laughs> It's, and, the, and John Kelly's a great guy. He's amazing. But there's just there's different energies and different connections. And when you learn that, I think it's a great skill set. And that's kind of what I want to talk about, again, because even with, with me, a lot's in sales. And, and there's groups of people, sometimes they're like, oh, well, so-and-so doesn't like you. And I'm, I go, well, that's okay. I don't like everybody either. You know, so it's not always our job to have everybody like us. We just need to know who we can get along with. And so from what you did with the mentalist side, how did you start transitioning into the program you have now? Talk to us about the program and the book. Well, like I said, I, I, do, I used to do a lot of corporate events. I mean, I still do. But as a mentalist, you start getting into people saying, you know, do you do motivational speaking? Can you work with my employees? Do you do training? Do you, you know? So I was able to take my skill set and develop, you know, programs where I was, performing but i was teaching at the same time so i used to call it, it's like stealth <laughs> you're stealthily going under the radar because what you're doing is you're delivering the message from the client but you're delivering it in the middle of you know what could be a show yeah. so you're hiding it sometimes so where people may tune out a speaker you know they never tune me out and they, they the client's always happy because the message gets across so once i realized that i mean of course you know, the more you're doing to help people, the more money you're making. So, you know, and as an entertainer, it's great. You're on stage. It's fantastic. You got a thousand people, you know, on their feet. But at the end of that, when it's over, the, ru the rush is over you know, yeah. because there's no, you don't have anything substantial. You haven't helped anyone. I mean, you've amazed someone or, you know, or told them the name of their first kiss, but, but you didn't do anything that's they're going to take. And, you know, tomorrow they're going to make their life somehow better. Yeah. So that was addictive. Once you started doing that, I started doing that and then people were saying, oh I, my God, I've been doing this. And so um, I started putting together programs where it's maybe 10% of my act or my show and the rest of it is motivation, mind power. You know, most people don't, it's like we were all born with this unbelievable supercomputer and they never give you a manual to tell you how to use it. So all your life, you've got this brain and your, your mind and you don't know how it works. You don't know exactly, they say, you need to learn how to focus but nobody ever teaches you how to focus. Yeah. They don't tell you how, what even that, what does that mean to, to focus? So I really was intrigued with the idea of, just like Tony Robbins always says, some people achieve at a high level and some people achieve nothing at all. And what's the difference between, they have all the same, you know, hours in the day. Right. So, you know, so we started putting together programs. Um, I, my partner is Catherine Taylor in Australia, big success coach, fantastic. I went through her program and I was so taken by it that we joined forces together. So that's what we're doing. We're slowly, we're putting out, you know, books, we're, our courses, we're doing a lot of live uh, virtual seminars and things like that until we can go back into the, you know, back on tour again. So Perfect. that's, you know, that's where we are. Uh, I'm going to transition us into something, Brent, but stay closer if you would, the microphone. Okay. Uh, because you, the, the audio is great when you're up front. Yeah. It, earlier you mentioned something. And again, I have all of these sayings because I've got a background in sales and psychology. And uh, what I call what you said at the beginning of that, you know, part of the segment, I call that psychological jujitsu. It's where people don't really know they think you're coming at them and then you kind of duck out of the way, but you have a goal. Then the other thing I, I talk about, again, this is where I want to get to is I, I preface it when I do a lot of public speaking, I tell people, right, because if you have an objection, you brag about it then it's no longer an objection. I tell people up front, there's three types of speakers. And a lot of times on stage, I'm up against the other two and people love the other two, but they don't understand the third. I said, there's aspirational speakers. They're going to get up and tell you all of these great things and how great you can be. And there's inspirational speakers. Look at my story. Look how incredible. Look at all the great things I've done. And then there's educational and the educational ones may not get you excited when you're watching them, but if they give you the tools when you leave, that the educational ones are the ones who make a difference and not everybody's educational. And so that's where I think with kind of your, 
your program. Talk to us, if you would, about the book that's out, sort of these, these steps and things you've learned. Start giving us some practical tips that, that are things that you've learned along the way that you can share with people. Sure. Um, I mean, the number one thing, and you know this, it's mindset. Until you have the right mindset, you can't do anything. And the problem is everyone is always looking for something out there to make it better in here. Yeah. when it's the other way around. So, you know, you're always looking for validation from a person. I, when I meet the right girl, I'm going to be happy. When I get the right job and, I, and you're constantly going your entire life from one thing to the next and never getting, you know, the happiness that you think. So the first thing that, that I always have taught is just the, the power of mindset and what you've got to do to get in the, in the right frame of mind. Yeah. Um, what we have, if you, uh, on the website, successsecrets.net, the ebook there uh, is free and it's five steps to the perfect mindset. And I give all five, you know, five of the tips, just of things you can do, little hacks, things that you can make changes and start make lasting change. You know, yeah. everyone wants to change, but everyone wants a, a, a pill or something that does it for them. You know, like weight loss, obviously it doesn't, have, it doesn't happen. You know, you, you have to put in some effort and, and that's where, you know, people are selling, I don't get people all in, you know, psyched up into some state where, you know, I, I do my thing, connect with them, show them strategies they can use, they can implement in their everyday life. Because a lot of people go to these seminars and, you know, they get so, I mean, Tony Robbins is amazing, but you're so psyched up when you're there in the next day or three days or whatever. But, you know, you can't keep up that pace normally. You know, it's yeah. hard to stay in that state. So just trying to teach people how they can use these things in their everyday life you know, to make change. Yeah. And on our website, uh, taylorweb.org, it's also freelifetools.com. On the store there, the book you're talking about is called Secrets of Mind Power. Because what I did was I took my entire career and I went back and I worked with so many famous people. I mean, presidents, prime ministers, celebrities, and, and you know, Cleveland Browns, all these yeah. sports teams and stuff. So that you know, learning from those people and taking their success stories, you know, uh, that's another thing that I kind of mix in is th that's the inspirational stories like you're talking about. Some of these people I've met, you know, uh, oh. I met once I did uh, a month at a monastery one summer about 10 years ago. And these monks, all they did was chant in Tibet. They chanted uh, 12 yeah. hours a day. But I'm going to tell you one thing. This guy freaked me out. He, he shows up uh, whoever this, the master, master, whatever shows up and they're telling him what I do and everything. And he says, think of, think of any word in the English language. And I'm thinking of it and he goes lumberjack. And I, and I was, and I mean, this is what I do for a living. Right. <laughs> and he goes, you know, mind reading, all of these things you all think are impossible are not when you think, when you realize we're all connected yeah. to this energy, you know, this <laughs> energy field. So he was doing things for real that at the time I was doing, you know, with tricks. Yeah. So that was such a huge thing for me, you know, that I, my God, this is, there's something to all this, you know? Interesting. I, uh, that, that's why I said the conversation with you and I is fascinating because it's like all these little points. I'm like, boom, boom, boom. People come to me and they go, oh, well, you've read so many books. What books should I read? You what? And, and I've done a podcast, my top 10. I say, you have to read the 10 books I'm going to suggest in order. Right. And you have to stack. And the first book I tell everybody to read is, what to say when you talk to yourself. Because if you can't reprogram your own thoughts, everything else is irrelevant because you'll sabotage your, your, your self-doubt. So if you can't reprogram your brain at the beginning, everything else is a waste of time. Yeah, and talk about synchronicity. I did a video yesterday and the, the video is called The Power of Self-Talk. Yeah. And that's what it is because it's true. People don't realize, you know, I have rel I have an aunt who is the most negative person you will ever meet in your life. This is a woman who can go through a car wash and somehow her window comes down and fills the car with soap. Who does that happen to, right? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who, but everything is, I hate my life. You know, it's just my luck. And guess what? She's right. Everything, you know, she's right because she's doing it to herself. She's definitely sabotaging herself. Yeah. The, 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 the first aspect of what to say when you talk to yourself has to be done because otherwise, and so these five tools, again, my, even my 10 steps, I've got a 10 step belief system and step one, I don't want to call it begin with the end in mind. That's Tony Robbins, but that step one for me is sort of designing your destiny, which is teaching people how to figure out what it is they even want. And I saw some of your, your stuff and tools and things like that. 
you know, so for somebody that's starting this journey, right? Even with Deepak Chopra, where are you? A seeker, a seer? What are some tips you can give somebody at the beginning that says, here's what you can do to think differently. Here's what you can do to, to be specific. Here's what you can do to start training your mind. Well, you know, it's funny. One of, one of my friends is Gavin McLeod from The Love Boat, right? The captain of The Love Boat. Yeah. I, well, he got me on my first cruise ship years ago, but he took, it was so great. He said, you know, life is like a cruise ship. And I'm like, yeah, okay, oh, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna hear some love boat story. But you know, what he said was so profound because we don't know our goal. And he said, you know, think of a cruise ship. If you had a cruise ship that had, you know, the crews on board, they have all these sure. navigational equipment, you know, every night they set it and the next morning you wake up and you're in the next port because the ship, you know, but if you did the same thing, went up to the bridge, flipped on the, the controls and everyone left, I mean, the ship's just gonna crash somewhere because there's no destination, that no, you know, there's no goal. Most people don't know where they're going. They don't, all they have are dreams. You know, they all want to do the secret. They all want to sit on their sofa, wish for a Ferrari, have it show up in the driveway with no, you know, nothing else. It's just not how it works, you know? Right. So the first thing I would say is, with mindset, is to figure out what you want. You know, what do you want? What is your, you know, what is the thing in life that makes you passionate, that makes you smile, that you would do for free? Yeah. And let's talk about doing that. You know, people are, are, are slaves to, to a system where they're working for 40 years, 30 years, whatever, and then they retire and, the, you know, it's miserable. They don't realize there's something there, else there. You know, people don't see that. It's a, uh, that's why I said, I, I love these conversations, Brent, because again, I've done so much of this. It's good to be, see, my first step of my 10, the very first step of step one is I make them define financial independence, pick a number, ask what they would do if they had more money. So then it becomes less selfless. I say, now if money's no longer an object, what do you want your life to be like? And that was sort of the key word you said as if it was for, for what's, what are you passionate about if money was not a determinant? And people just say, don't even know mentally how to get to that point. And so you sort of have to walk people through a process, but most people don't know. They don't know what makes them happy. They don't know what financial independence is. They can't define rich i said three dollars to a guy in india might be rich here's three dollars yeah you know so with within what you're doing if if somebody can learn how to be specific and set things in their mind what are some of the actions they can take after that again it's a, a these are all my stories it's like the guy who wants to win the lottery ticket god please please one day the voice booms down hey buddy do me a favor at least buy a ticket yeah <laughs> You know, you can't sit and wish for a fry. I, I tell people, the universe gives you exactly what you ask for if you work for it, but you better be really specific because usually it's not what you thought you wanted because you didn't ask the right question. Uh, I love that. We, you and I are on the same page exactly. Yeah. This is exactly, I mean, everything you're talking about is exactly what I teach too because, you know, another thing is people are in such a, a mindset of lack. They think, you know, there's not enough for everybody. You know, there are some people, money's bad. I mean, you know, they, that family passes that down like cancer. Yeah, you have to shift that mentality of what you would do for others to change the energy. Yeah, they just don't get it. And yeah. so when you're coming, it's like um, Robert Kiyosaki says, you know, there are people, rich people buy, uh, they invest. And people that just get money, they buy assets. So, you know, somebody make, gets a million dollars, they go out and buy a Ferrari. You know, they buy something that's going to cost them money. They don't know, they just don't understand how it works. Yeah. So goal is the first thing, very important. Uh, and then of course, uh, figuring out if your mindset is a mindset of lack or uh, of abundance, you know, and, yeah. and what is important to you. Because abundance doesn't just mean money, obviously. Like, you know, it means, uh, you know, abundance of love, an abundance of, of um, fulfillment, an abundance of, abundance of passion. It doesn't have to just be, and it's not gonna be the same for everybody. You know, there's no cookie cutter. People think like you read a book, you do a course, and, you know, it's not a machine where everybody falls out the end exactly the same, right. you know, it, it's like what you were saying about reading books too. And you have to read them in a certain order and that sort of thing. You go back and read a book again and something you, you read already now hits you like a, a lightning bolt out of the blue, you know, because now you understand it better than you did yeah. the first time you saw it, you know? Well, I, I use that one in the two books I use, and I'm sure again, you'll, you'll laugh at mine. I either use the secret, which to me I describe as like Chinese food. I love Michael and that team, but you read it once and you're like, there's, I'm hungry again. There's something that's not there. Or my favorite is Think and Grow Rich. 
Oh, of course. You know, yeah. Oh, I read Think and Grow Rich. I'm like, great. What's it mean? Oh, if you think, I'm like, think what? Oh, it's no chapter one, verse one, line one mentions made in every chapter of the secret. You have to dissect what's there. And people are like, I've read it five times. They, I know what it is. You probably do too. They, so I've gone and read that book. Even I've read Think and Grow Rich seven times. I still didn't figure it out. There's probably 200 books behind that you had to put all these things together. Yeah. You know, but if, if you start accelerating skill sets, you know, which is why, again, with your program, that's why I'd love for people to know and do it. Cause I don't do consulting. I don't sell a program. I don't teach it, but I love what you're doing because it's important for people to learn these skills. And if they do the work, they will get better. For sure. It's what any, like anything, if you put the work in, you're going to get the results out. I mean, cause and effect here, like anything. And why not spend some, some time with yourself? That's the other thing. We're in such a, you know, they say our attention span is what, seven seconds? It used to be seven minutes or something. Yeah, in the we're, we're goldfish. <laughs> oh, man, we are in such a, a, a bad state of affairs where everybody, you know, I've been to concerts where the audience is all filming the show on their phone. It's like you're at a concert. And you're filming, so you're looking at it exactly like you'd be if you were home looking at this video, you know? You go to different ones than I do. I must go to the younger demographic because they're filming themselves watching the concert. <laughs> so they're turned away and they're filming themselves. Like what, you know? Everyone's, that's the thing. You, you, everyone is, you know, a star now. Everyone yeah. is a, a YouTube star, an Instagram star. It's, you know, it's just not like it used to be. It's great. You, you embrace change, but man, it's moving fast. I mean, everything's going so fast. Yeah. Somebody asked me, I was on a United Nations thing yesterday with a great guy named Kwasi Asar and they were talking about social media and my phrase on social media, it's, it's, it's like the internet. Greatest strength is your greatest weakness. The greatest strength is everybody has an opinion. The weakness is opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one and that's where the crap comes from. So all of a sudden everybody has a voice, but a voice doesn't make you an expert and, and, and I they're not equal the voices are not equal a guy sitting in his basement in nebraska is not equal to a doc you know to a doctor or, or it's just but everyone thinks but they think they're, they're keyboard are. warriors it's like yeah. you know i'm i'm saved by this this you know mask of the internet so you can say you would never say that to somebody things to somebody in person that you say online it's right it's crazy yeah it's 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 changed our world drastically um so within, within the program now, are you doing more? Because the book is online. There's some that's free. Then I see you also have another program that people can buy. It looks like it has a lot more information and steps. And then there's probably, a, hopefully we'll come back a corporate speaking F2P, you know, face-to-face, -face, F2F side. Oh, yeah. We're going to do some work together. I can, I can, I'm predicting it already. I'm, I'm a mentalist, right? Of course. Yeah, there, that's why I said there's a lot of crossover stuff. But with, with the free book, which is super cool, there's also the paid program I saw, which probably gives people a lot more skill sets. And again, this is, I have so many sayings. Experience is the best teacher. It's also the slowest. I'd rather buy a program and learn from somebody else's successes or mistakes so I don't make the same ones. And that's why I encourage, I love programs like yours. So Within the program side, what are some of the things that are there that, that somebody might get outside of the free book? And then on the corporate side, what do you do differently for corporate? Well, the, the, the course is structured in such a way that it takes you if, you, if you know nothing about anything to do with mind power, what you want in life, it takes you from the very neophyte stage at the beginning through eight modules of you know, increasingly you know, just learning about life force energy and how the mind works, what, what it means to focus, you know, uh, how we're all energy. And it really, you know, it, each module builds on the last, but it, it takes you through, you can do it at your own pace, but then there's eight videos, a bunch of freebies. But if you go to successsecrets.net, the free ebook is there, the, on the next page is the course. So you, it, you can take a look at it guys and you read it for yourself. There's a ton of stuff there videos that I've done, you can, you can see, but everything in that course, this is, I'm not one of those people who, you know, writes a course at my desk that I've never tried or just a bunch of bullshit, everything in there. And I've never had any other course. This is my 27th year. I'm not putting out a course every six months. This is everything. This is what I've been working on. You know, I worked with, like I said, presidents and I would say, you know, the president, I, I worked for president Bush, president Obama, and I got that a little bit of time, you know, every one of the successful people I've ever worked with, 
used mind power. They yeah. knew something about it. They knew how to, to uh, focus it, direct it on their goals. And that's where the success comes from. You know, everybody else has got a million distractions. The, the outside world is influencing your mind, which is what they want to do. Right. They've got you upset over crap that you, you should care less about. And the big stuff is flying by you. So you're <laughs> being controlled 24 seven by the outside world, you know, and, and it's controlling your emotions. So learning that, you know, I was thinking today driving, uh, just the fact that I know when my mind is going into autopilot is the biggest gift ever because I can stop, you know, some people start looping and they spend yeah. a week, two weeks, a year, the rest of their life. My mom, you know, hit me when I was 10 years old and now you're 50, your mom's long dead and you're still fighting your mother. They drag it through their whole life. So oh. knowing that, that you can let this shit go, you don't have to carry this crap and you can start, you know, we, we give everyone else a second chance. Everyone, you give your, your you know, your friends hurt you, your, your loved ones hurt you, but we never give ourselves one. And yeah. you know, we're so hard on ourselves. We, cause what's happening, you're looking at reality and you're looking at it through the lens of your past. And that's the problem. Cause none of us are seeing reality the same because I'm seeing it through all the things that happened to me. So learning that to differentiate it, to decompartmentalize everything and, and kind of start from scratch. It's like rebooting your, you know, rebooting your, your brain, <laughs> your mind and, and starting again with a new, with a, a, a blank operating system, you know, well, and getting rid of some of that crap. I, I don't know what we'll ever do to, together, Brent, but if we do, it'll be fun. Cause I just keep taking notes and I have, and these are all my little phrases. So if you want them, you can have them sometime. Give me credit to this crazy guy you talked to on a podcast. I, I have these sort of, sayings right and and one i've got nine or ten of them one of them is 99 percent of the things you worry about never happen so why worry and that one percent's probably going to happen and be out of your control so all all i can control are my actions and my attitude people are like oh what do you think about COVID? i'm like i don't know i don't like i can't control what's going to happen i can control my actions and attitude and what i do but my second one, which I wrote, wrote down, which I've used for years, you can have this one. There's no future in the past. Uh, yeah. You used to be like, oh, well, what about this? I'm like, I don't know. Well, I don't think backwards. They go, well, what do you mean you don't think backwards? I'm like, there's no future in the past. I don't, I remember things historically, but I don't remember time. Like I'm, I fall forward, you know, so yeah. it's this forward. Um, and then the compartmentalization one I think is fascinating. We won't spend much time on this, but uh, I think you'll appreciate people like, oh, well, do you meditate? I'm like, all the time. Well, how? I said, I have a compartment. So to me, I've learned how to look at my brain like compartmentalized rooms. If I have a company, Mineta Pro, there's a certain lexicon and language and terminology that I need to open that's different than, uh, so I have a room in my head that's constantly meditating. I know the color. I know the energy. It's, I don't need to sit for 15, like I access it anytime I want because you can compartmentalize your brain and it's fascinating you know to learn how to do that so with, with within this what are some of the things if somebody were to look at Brent and his program what's the takeaway you want somebody to have what can we um, for the people who really want to learn and put time and effort in I'm not about just you know things are free and easy and and you know you should pay for programs that people put time and effort into which is well, I love yours. What's some of the takeaways that you would want somebody to look at your program and go, here's what I want them to get out of it? Well, it's great because one of the modules I'm talking about is exactly what you just said. And it's, we live 40% of the time, our time we're living in the past and 40% of the time we're in the future. And the problem is the past is over. You can't change well, it. The future the is never going to happen the way you think. You're driving down the road. You're arguing in your mind. You're thinking about an argument you're going to have with your, your spouse. You're doing both sides of the fight. You're doing all this shit. It's never going to happen the way you think. So the only time you're in the present is 20%. And that's the only time magic can happen because yeah. you can't do anything that's going to give you any lasting change in the past or in the future. And that's where most people spend their time in one of those two places. So it's learning the fact that first of all, anybody can do this. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, a bum on the street, a multi-billionaire. These are things that work for everyone yeah. because it's not pie in the sky. You should try this. I heard somebody did this. This is, I did all these things. I learned this from, you know, and I, I list the people and I talk about, you know, my journey. Cause I mean, you know, just like you, we made mistakes along the way in 27 years. You're not getting those mistakes in this course. You're getting everything that worked. 
Yeah. You know, I did all the other crap, you know, I did all of the, you know, the law of attraction and I believe in that tremendously, but you know, the secret is a marketing genius. I mean, that whole concept is a genius bit of marketing. Like it's hidden. It's a secret. That's the greatest. I mean, it's just genius. I wish I would have thought of that myself, (laughs) you know, but there's something to all that, you know, you're attracting to you, not just what you're thinking, but what you are as a person, you know, and I meditate every day too. And the other thing is I give free with the course, my book on meditation, because I think that's a great way to start. Oh, wow. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, What do I do? You know, if take five minutes a day, start and start meditating, connect with yourself. Yeah. And again, I, it's not that I put it to the detriment. I just learned how to run that program in my mind at any point for, to keep me calm and keep me focused. Um, you, again, you said something interesting. I keep going back to bring us forward and I love this. Uh, again, Jose Silva, the mind control method I read years ago. It was fascinating when you were talking about fighting with yourself and how you think the argument's going to go. There's actually ways to project how you want it to go. How much of the mental side do you think? And again, this is the, there's a difference between destiny. Oh, it just happened because it happened and define destiny, which it happened because I created it. So do you think as a mentalist, this will be my last question because I want people to get your program. Do you think you can control and influence other factors? Just like the argument's a great example. You're driving, you know, there's going to be a fight with somebody. Do you have that fight in your mind or do you create the sequence and scenarios and outcomes you want and try and influence the outcome when you get there? I think you do. And I mean, that's what I do. I mean, I know it. I see it from my personal life. Now, that's not something you can teach so much, uh, you know, and something you can promise somebody, but I can guarantee if somebody's now, now, like you, you're talking about, you know, meditation in your mind and everything. That's because you've done it for so long. And I, same thing, I don't need to have uh, vision boards anymore because I, you know, I can do that in my mind. Yeah. So, you know, it's like Oprah says, you know, I can manifest day and night, you know, so I don't need all that stuff, but you, somebody beginning does, you need right. the tools of visualization, affirmation, but absolutely you are influencing everything around you. I mean, we're all connected and, and a web of energy in the universe. So it's impossible for one thing to move and not like a web, you touch part of it and it vibrates across the entire thing. Yeah. So things that you're doing, you think, you know, it's not affecting anyone and it certainly is. So, yeah. you know, we could change the world if everybody would just get, you know, they get just themselves have to together. That's what I tell people in the argument scenario is, how do you know? Well, even if it changed your own energy, if it changed your perspective going in, if you're going in with a positive outcome, your energy alone may influence that outcome when you're there. It's just that base level of thinking that people don't understand. And, and that's, you know, again, I, we could probably do this for hours, Brant. I have a feeling we may end up doing it another time. Uh, but let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question sure. real quick. Yeah. I want to do something with you. I'll, I'll give you a little demonstration okay. of, of, of something you can do. Oh yeah. You were going to do something. Here we go. Yeah. I want you to do me a favor uh, in your mind. I want you to go back to your childhood and I want you to go back to a birthday party anywhere between say three to 10 years old one of your birthday parties and just tell me when you can visualize that in your mind. So this is, and again, Lior's a friend of ours. We've done these things. This is a struggle for me. I, I, I don't remember birthday parties. I don't remember things from my childhood either because I've blocked it out. And I've joked with my mom about, Hey, did I really have birthday parties? Oh, you were an astronaut. You were a pilot. You were a cowboy. Like, give me pictures, give me some visual recall because I don't remember the first birthday party I remember I have in my mind, but it's not that age frame. I'll, I'll give you that as a tip. It's not three to 10 because I don't remember anything that young. Okay, then here's what I want you to do. I just want you to think of a, a friend, not, a, not your best friend, but a friend, a school friend or something. Can you think of one person that you haven't thought of in years that you can visualize in your mind? Uh, at that age? No, I'll get, say two to 15. Can you think of one between there? See, I, around the classroom. You got it's somebody you went to school with. So yeah, si- silence is deadly on things like this. I would have to search. I've I've programmed my mind so much that I don't have memories. I have some memories from seventh and eighth grade. Okay, so give me look. Just think of somebody. I've got one. I want you to think of someone you've not thought of. 
I've got one in my mind that's not a classmate. It's not somebody my age, but it's in that range of okay. time. Can you, can you see their face in your mind? Yeah. Okay. I want you to, to imagine you've got a neon sign inside your head in one yeah. of your compartments. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And I want you to see this person's first name in red neon in your head. Okay. And tell me when you can see that. Even, you know what that sound neon makes when it's lit up, you know, that vibrating? I, I know the buzz. I'm giving you the buzz. I'm, I'm not trying to trick you like I do with Leora. I'm trying to, to give it okay. to you. What is this person's first name? Say it out loud. His first name is Fern, which is, it's Fernando, but his first name is Fern. Okay, so like F-E-R-N. F-E-R, uh, yeah. Erase the blackboard inside your head. Okay. And I want you to do one more thing. You've been all over the world like me, right? Think of any place in the world that you've been that you can attach any kind of memory to, good or bad, and uh, tell me when you have it. Got it. That was quick. All right. What place are you thinking of? Monaco. Monaco. Okay. I did a, the President's Cruise uh, for Crystal Cruises once. We did, we did Monaco. Uh, yeah, at the, at the, the um, casino there, too. Okay. So... Uh, do me a favor, erase again the blackboard inside your head. Okay. Good. So how long has it been since you saw Fern? Um, eighth grade, probably. Eighth grade, ninth grade, somewhere in there. Do you eighth remember, what, do you remember, because your memory is so, you know, that you've got it trained so well. Do you remember what his voice sounds like? Not particularly. I, I know what he looks like. I can see him, visualize him in my mind. I can't really remember his voice. Okay. How long ago were you in Monaco? Um, I, I don't think backwards time-wise. I know it would have been before March, uh, pre-COVID, probably a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. Now we didn't talk. We came right onto this thing. We started recording. You and I didn't yeah. talk, and because a lot of people, mentalists, you know, they other people think they're using influence, and they're using. Yeah. You know, these are things I couldn't influence you to say, obviously. These are your thoughts, okay? Now, have you noticed this thing I've been wearing? I did. I thought you were just, you know, a clip with a notepad on it in case you had to look down or drool or write on. I wasn't sure. <laughs> it's an envelope. I'm going to show yeah. you this. Inside, there is a piece of paper. Okay. I'm going to bring this really close so you can see it. And I wanted to leave the screen, but I want you to look. You are amazing. I love you guys. You guys are crazy. Freak us so, yeah. out. That's, <laughs> Brent, this stuff is so cool. Like I said, you, I, I hadn't met you. I'm so appreciative. Lior is, is a friend of ours too, and I watch him on Brain Games. And you, you guys are just amazing in how you do that. I don't know how it works. Maybe one day I'll learn, but. I'll teach you. We'll do yeah, it. Yeah, I appreciate it. So um, great stuff. Thank you so much. Make it a great 2021. And we'll push everybody to the website. Sounds great. Thanks, Stephen. Great meeting you.